Okay, so now we're recording. Um, so yeah, so let's uh, jump to um, odd even behavior first. Uh, I'll come back and do like one, two, and three. I'm just going to jump around a little bit. So odd even behavior, in case you guys forgot. Hopefully you didn't, but if you did, um, there's um, three ways of looking at this. If you replace x with negative x, but it equals the original function, we say it's an even function. Good example of the even function would be number six. So for number six, if you replace the x with negative x, then instead of three x four, you have three parentheses negative x four. Instead of negative two x squared, you have negative two parentheses negative x squared. And of course, you just have the final five. There's no x next to it. Um, if you square, sorry, if you take a negative number and you raise it to four power, it stays positive. If you multiply negative x four times, right? That's x squared times x squared, which is back, back to x4. So that stayed unchanged. Likewise, we multiply negative x twice, right? Comes back to x squared. But there's still negative 2 to the left of it, so you have negative 2x squared. And of course, the 5 stays as 5. Hence why we call it a constant. So what happens is that the, the new function is actually not really new. It's the same as it was before. When this happens, we say it's an even function. If you were to graph this in the calculator in Desmos, you would see that the graph, I'm not 100% sure how it looks, I'm kind of guessing how it looks, but I'm pretty sure the y-axis is gonna cut in half. That's also another telltale sign they have an even function. Um, of course, I'm not letting you guys use a graphing calculator, but um, you know, really just replace x with negative x and see what happens. If it stays the same, it's even. Another thing you could do as well is plug in one. If you plug in one to get three minus two plus five, which I know is six, we we'll plug in negative one, see what happens. You still get three minus two plus five, which is still six. So that's another way you could tell. Now, the other scenario is when if you replace x with negative x, but all of a sudden, it's like f of x times negative one, meaning that all those um, signs here change, then you have an odd function. So everything has to change sign. So if I do that right now, that's a terrible looking three. Let's do it again. So you place all the x's with negative x. Now, when you multiply um, a negative number an odd number of times, like negative x times negative x times negative x times negative x times negative x, that becomes x squared. That also becomes x squared. But then you have a negative x that's lonely. You have x4 times negative x. You give a negative x to the fifth power. So you multiply um, anything negative an odd number of times, it's negative, right? So you have negative 3 times negative x to the fifth. And likewise, here you have plus two times negative x cubed. And you have um, nine, that's a terrible looking nine, uh, actually just minus nine x. And if I finish it off, uh, negative three and negative x to the fifth is three x to the fifth. And then of course, two times negative x is minus two x cubed. And of course, negative five x. So everything changed sign for sure. Right? The negative three became positive three, the positive became negative two, and then the positive nine became negative nine. Uh, I don't want to put a five. Jeez, that's weird. I'm sorry. Um, so, yeah, so this gets us an odd function. And odd functions would be symmetric about the origin. Like that's an example of an odd function. Um, so, we will pass with the origin. And if you rotate 180 degrees about the origin, you get back to the same configuration. That's an odd function. And lastly, there's a question in the chat. Oh, yeah. Um, what happens if you plug in one? Well, yeah, let's do it right now. If you plug in one, you have negative three plus two plus nine, so that's eight. If you plug in negative one, now careful, because a lot of negatives, <laughs> you have negative three times negative one raised to the fifth power plus two times negative one cubed 
plus nine times negative one. That actually becomes three minus two minus nine, which gets you negative eight. So there's a total sign change. So wait, <clears throat> the strategy for number five, um, mm -hmm. it's just like plug in one and plug in negative one and see if they change. Well, if you do that, I'm not gonna give you full credit because I am gonna ask for an algebraic solution. Uh, I'm just doing that, but you can check just to make sure you got it right. Wait, what was the uh fuck? Okay, I definitely missed it. It's okay. Well, I'll do it again. We'll do it again for four. I right, appreciate it. Wait, also, Actually, let, me, hold on. Have... let me back up a little bit. Um, it's be about doing zoom. I can undo. Here we go. And then, I... sorry, uh, go ahead. Someone speaking. Um, do you have to plug in one and negative one, or can I just do no, 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 no? Um, I just did one and negative one just so you can. Feel comfortable okay. you got it. That's all. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so you, but yeah, but yeah. I ha you have to show this work. Okay, got it. Um, so you have to replace x with negative x and see what happens. And if it stays the same, it's even. If it um if all this the um signs change, every term goes from positive negative or negative positive, whatever. Um, is a total sign change for everything, then yeah, then you have to say it's odd because it's like you're multiplying the whole thing by negative one. And if uh, some change, some don't change, and it's neither. So number four is going to be a neither situation. What I would do first, I'd, I'd foil it just to get it um, easy to work with, you know? So that's f of x, right? Now what we're going to do is replace the x with negative x. So instead of x squared, you have parentheses negative x squared. Instead of uh, minus x, you have minus negative x. And of course, you have minus x at the end. If you square negative, it stays positive. <clears throat> you do minus a negative becomes plus x and minus six. So what happened was uh, the x squared stayed the same, but that changed. And that stayed the same. So the first and last term stayed the same, but the middle term changed. So it has to be all or nothing. Either everything stays the same or everything changes. Because not everything changes, it stays neither. And also, if you're to graph it, um, it's going to have a y-axis of negative 6, but it's going to be kind of off-centered a little bit like this. So the y-axis is not cutting in half. It's not passing through the origin where it would be symmetric about the origin. So that's another way uh, you could see. Or if you're plugging 1, I would get uh, 1 minus 1 minus 6, which, of course, is negative 6. If I plug in negative 1, I'd have one plus one because I'm do minus negative one minus six, which is actually negative four. So that's totally different. It's not the same number. It's not a sign change. So you have to um, say neither. But again, algebra is what I'm looking for. And that's where you have to place X with negative X. Okay. So I think that was a pretty thorough review <laughs> of odd even. Um, and as soon as this uh, calls over, I will um, download the recording and upload to YouTube right away and share the link with you guys. Um, so we're cool. We're good. Okay. Um, let's do a difference quotient. I'm going to jump to that and then I'll do transformations after that. And then I'll field other questions or we'll just do other problems. Um, okay, here we go. Perfect. Difference quotient. Um, I'm giving one that's a little easier in this one. This one's a little, little tricky. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you guys an easier one on the test. Um, but I will give you the formula. The formula will be um, written next to it. Um, so this is the difference quotient. And all it is is a slope. It's a change y or change in x. Now, that doesn't look like a change in x, but it is. Because you're subtracting x plus h with x. The x is canceled. That's why you get h on the bottom. And graphically speaking, what this represents is, you know, you got a funky curve like that, you got two points. We'll call this X, we'll call this X plus H. And you have a line that passes those two points. And you simply find the slope and the red curve is F of X. So obviously the Y coordinate here is F of X. So you can think of that as X comma F of X. And then the Y coordinate at X plus H is F of X plus H, right? Cause you're replacing X with X plus H. So you can think of those coordinates as x plus h comma f of x plus h. 
And so the formula is just basically slope, right? The change of y over change in x. So it's not it's not really rocket science. It's it's something you've always done. It's just it's just cosmetically a little different, I'd say. But um, what will um, will you will you be earning your where, where you'll be earning your points will be how you simplify it. So first of all, let's just plug in. Um, let's replace x with x plus h. So instead of one over x plus three, have one over x plus h plus three, right? And instead of um, f of x, have one over x plus three. So in dark blue, you have that. In light blue, you have that. And it's if, obviously not, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but it's not like a hard equation to memorize, but do we have to memorize it or is it? No, I'm, 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 I'm gonna give that to you. Oh, but that. Yeah, yeah, we'll be right next to the problem itself. Amazing. Yeah, it is amazing, okay. <laughs> so now here's uh, what you have to do um, next. You have to simplify it. Um, Again, I'm not going to give you one this hard because this one's a, like, I'll give you an equation. Just, you know, I'm going to give you something that's kind of like this, like X squared plus X. I'll give you something like that. Um, so uh, the one I'm going to give you is simpler than this one, but you're going to have to find the LCD, unfortunately. So that's the part that's kind of a pain here. Because um, if you combine, so you have one over X plus H plus three, right? Minus one over x plus three. Ah, my threes are terrible. One over x plus three, and the whole shebang is over h. And I'm going to write this as h over one because I'm going to have to flip that eventually. Now, what you have to do is multiply this by x plus h plus three. And multiply this by x plus three. So that's just least common denominator stuff, which I know you guys have done in algebra two. But again, I'm not going to give you because we're going to talk more about rational functions in the next unit. Um, so I'm going to give you something that's just simple, like x squared plus x, something like that. But if you clean it up, it's not too bad. You should get um, x plus three for the first fraction, and then negative x, negative h, and negative three, because I have to screw that negative into all that junk. And the denominator, of course, is x plus three times x plus h plus 3, because that's your LCD. And the whole thing is over h, um, over h, or h over 1. Now, fortunately, things cancel out very nicely. The x cancel this x, the 3 cancel that negative 3. So now, it looks like this. And let me move my um, video box here. So you have a negative h up top, x plus 3, times x plus h plus 3, and then this flips over to become one over h because you're dividing by it. And those h's cancel, of course. But because you had a negative h up top, that becomes negative one. And that's your answer. The answer is going to be negative one over x plus three times x plus h plus three. And why we're doing this, because I'm trying to get you ready for calculus, right? Um, yeah, so we may not do calculus, you know, so this, maybe this is, um, you know, maybe, you know, this is the only, um, what's the right word to use? Not the only math class, because I know you guys do more math classes, but in this kind of like um, lineage or this kind of like pathway, maybe, maybe this is as high as you go. And then maybe you go on to a different kind of um, vertical, maybe you do like stats or a data science class, or maybe you do computer programming, um, which are all great classes to take. Um, but if you do kind of move forward in this, in this vertical, in this pathway, um, the next step would be calculus, right? And um, this is something you'll be doing often in calculus. In fact, actually, once you finish this problem, then you would plug in zero for H because the whole point is you want uh, X and X plus H to eventually be the same point. So we don't, we're not doing it in this class, obviously, because that's a calculus thing. But if you were to plug in zero for H, then of course you'd have X plus three times X plus three. And that's actually what we call the derivative. Um, so you're kind of... Um, getting a little bit of a sample of what derivatives will look like um, next fall if you take calculus. But for now, just use the formula, you know, plug in x plus h for x, of course, subtract with f of x, do the algebra, you get the answer. Uh, sure, go ahead. Um, Mr. E, do we need to simplify the bottom ever? 
Oh, you mean the foil? No. Mm -mm. Uh, that's a waste of time. Don't do that. Um, well, I will ask, so simplify, really what simplify means, if you think about it, it means look, make it look more simple, right? If you foil it, actually, I don't think it makes it more, look simpler. I think it makes it look more complicated because they have all these terms. Simplify means when things cancel, right? And we already took care of the canceling. So, so that's been taken care of for us. Uh, okay, so that's difference quotient. And by the way, I did put um, a really good packet uh, for difference quotient. And I did put a video in Schoology. Uh, I did that yesterday. So if you go here, if you want a different question explanation, uh, this is, I think, uh, the organic chemistry tutor. His, um, he's got a nasally kind of voice, uh, but he's, uh, his stuff is good. Um, In this lesson, we're going to focus on finding... Yeah, that, the that's what I'm saying. Function. Yeah, and you can see uh, uh, some of my basketball <laughs> videos off to the right here. <laughs> yes, sir. Know, all the weird stuff I watch. But uh, anyway, uh, and then also, hold on one second, and also there's a packet too, if you guys want extra practice. Or if you want to do it now, it's probably, or we can do it during the session. There's an next one here. It has the odd answers. So anyway, sorry, uh, there's a question. Go ahead. Um, any chance if it doesn't take very long, can you maybe give us, like, can we do, like, the X squared minus X one with the... Sure, sure. Actually, okay. actually, um, yeah, let me do transformation. I'll come back to that. And then, Gigi, to answer your question, um, I'm not going to ask you guys to graph piecewise functions because I didn't teach it. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, I kind of... Kind of dropped the ball on that one because I think I was covering 1.3 and I wanted to move on to something else and you know, got sidetracked. Um, so I'm not going to ask you guys to grab piecewise function. I think this is Sasui's class is doing. So if you guys, I think you guys do talk to each other. Uh, let's just be honest. I think you guys do <laughs> communicate. Uh, and I think she's expecting them to do it. Uh, but in lieu of that, I'm going to be asking more questions on the whole increasing, decreasing interval stuff. I think I'm asking more questions on that kind of stuff than she is. Um, and we'll go over that um, later within the hour. But um, yeah, I'm not going to ask you guys to graph piecewise functions. Um, now, what I could do is I could ask you to evaluate a piecewise function, uh, but it would be um, part of the um, it, it would be part of the problem where I, again I give you a graph like when I give you like a really funky graph like this, and I'm asking it to like um, find me where like I'm, I'm totally making this up, but um, when I'm asking where it's increasing, decreasing. Um, I will actually provide the piecewise function that goes with that graph. So at least you'll have that. And um, I could ask you to like say, hey, maybe find me like f of one or f of two. But you have the graph anyway, you know? So um, yeah. But I'm not going to ask you to um, graph a piecewise function. Uh, but, you know, just so you understand how piecewise functions behave really quickly. Uh, let's say I have x squared plus 1 and 2x. And let's say this is true when x is less than 1. This is true when x is greater than or equal to 1. Say I ask you to find f of 3. Well, that's easy. Just um, plug 3 into the right one. And you're obviously going to go with this one because 3 is bigger than 1. So you get 9 plus 1, which is 10. But again, I'm going to be giving you a graph anyway, so it's not not a big deal. Um, okay, uh, let's do transformations next. If someone did ask about that, um, and then I uh, we can go back and do uh, another difference quotient problem. Yeah, so you see here in, in this one, um, yeah, so it does ask you to um, graph the piecewise function. I'm not going to ask you to do that. Actually, I'm going to give you the graph. I'll give you the function as well. I mean, I'll definitely give you this, but I'm gonna actually have a graph for you, so you don't have to graph it because I, I didn't, I, I forgot to teach it to you guys. Yeah, same thing for seventeen. Um, so what I would suggest you do, um, so you, at least you have the graph of this, is you go to Desmos. Yeah, this could just be me. I'm not gonna lie; I had no idea what that last stuff was. Like, I don't know what I would do for that. For what? The piecewise function? <laughs> yeah, like, what, like, if it's well, X. Well for, well, for example, like, let's look at, um, well, it's not that hard. Let's look at this one, F and negative 2, right? So uh, what's the X value? Negative 2, right? Negative, negative 2, um, shoot, that's a bad, that's a bad choice because negative 2 is not part of um, our domain. Let's see F of 1. So X is 1. If X is 1, which one am I going to go with? The first, second, or third? Is one less than negative two? No. 
is one between negative two and three. Yes. So you plug in that one. That's it. So then you plug in um, one and then yep. just get four. Yeah, work it out. The answer is four. <clears throat> and then what do you do from there? That's it. You're done. The answer is four. Oh, okay. So then, like for domain range, x intercepts. But, but, like... but see, I'm going to give you the graph, though. Oh, okay. okay, okay. I'm going to give you the graph. So that's why I'm going to, I'm going to Desmos right now. <laughs> Mr. E, how does that one work if it's negative, th if it, there's no, it's just negative three, there's no X, there's no variable? Yeah, then, then it's not defined. You just say undefined. Yes, but if I do this one here, so, so negative three, um, so negative three, and then you have to um, say when X is less than two. And then what's the next one? Um, negative two X plus six between negative two and three. Oh, Mr. E, it's um, X is less than negative two on the first one. You're right. It is less than negative two. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just showing how the graph looks. Um, again, I'm giving this to you guys. So um, it's less than or equal to three, but I don't know how to do less than or equal to. It's just that's okay. And then lastly, it's X minus three squared minus one. Yeah, um, let me clear my screen. Let me minimize that. So yeah, so that's the piecewise function. That's how it looks. So, and I think there's a hole here and another hole here. I think this is a filled in circle and that's a hole. And then you actually have to um, do all these things with it. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Um, I want to do transformations next. I have a question. When you get like, you just got four earlier, like yeah, mm -hmm. you solve for it, and then what is what does four like get you? Where do you go no, from? No, that? That, no, no, that's it. It's, you're just asked to find y coordinate at x equals. Okay, so one. the that's domain all. and range are totally separate. That's a separate thing. Yeah, we'll we'll go over that. Um, and then there's another question: Which examples in the previous packet you gave us would not be on a test? Um. Um, definitely. Um, well, I mean, I'm actually a little confused by your question uh, for this piecewise. Um, I'm a little confused with the question here. Um, the definitely, um, again, I'm not asking to graph piecewise functions, but um, if you're asking what questions on the previous packet I'm not asking, that's going to be uh, 10, 17, and 18, because those that was previous units. Um, so that's for sure. Um, I'm not asking those, um, if that's, if that's a question, um, okay, cool. Got, got, it. yeah. And, um, Leah, thank you for, um, asking about number nine, relative minimum max. I'll do that in a little bit. Um, let me do transformations because someone asked about that. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to this question here. Um, so on the extra packet that says, um, you know, um, find all those things here. I'm going to come back to that. And then, um, Lee, I know you asked about number nine. Uh, that's probably from the uh, previous packet, uh, relative and max. I'll do that for a fresh problem here so you can see how that works. Okay, transformations. Um, where have we got transformations? I know some stuff on that here. Um, yeah, this is on transformations. Let's, let's, let's talk about it over here. Okay. So you asked the state what transformations are happening. I'm totally going to ask that question. Um, so the parent function, um, I'll tell you what the parent function is. I mean, it's really kind of the, the most basic function that's related to this. So my parent function here is f of x equals x cubed. This one, this is h of x equals absolute i of x. And here, that's just simply g of x equals x. Okay, um, I'm not gonna ask you to name it. Um, actually, that was dumb. I should have put the equation here. 
my apologies. Um, I'll put it over here. Obviously, I had a space for it. <laughs> H of X equals absolute of X and G of X equals X. Again, I'm not going to ask it a name, the type of parent function, but in case you're curious, that's cubic. That's absolute but, value. And we have to know the equation or you give us the parent function? I'll give it, I'll give it the parent function. Okay. Yeah, and that's, of course, linear. Uh, so what, what, what I do care about is naming the transformations, right? So for example, X plus two, we have to go two left. Then the negative on the outside, that causes a reflection. That's reflect about the X axis. Reflect about the X axis. And then lastly, shift 11 down. And you do have to put in the right order. I will take off a point if it's not in the right order. Um, I will ask guys to do that. Actually, let me make sure I, well, I, I didn't print it. Um, I'll have to pull up my other device. Mr. E, uh, can you read that for me, please? Sure. Uh, actually, you know what? Uh, I will do even better. I will type it up. Wait, Mr. E, is it done. not? Would the order be reflect against the x-axis first or not? Um, actually, you could uh, say it first. Uh, it doesn't matter between that and the horizontal shift, but you definitely have to say it before the vertical shift. Um, what I prefer to do, just so you have a, um, a methodical approach, is a follow PEMDAS, right? Because what's the first thing you do with PEMDAS? Parentheses, right? And what's inside the parentheses? The plus two. And what does a plus two do? It shifts graph two left. So I prefer you say that first, but if you did say reflect about the x-axis first, I'll still give you full credit because that is correct. It would still get you the correct graph. Um, but technically speaking, it is a second step in the war of operations, right? Um, but, uh, but you definitely cannot say that before shifting down because that would get you the wrong graph. Reflect about x-axis and shift 11 down. Okay, let me um, resize that. And if, if there's no negative, there um, then it doesn't reflect? Nope, then it doesn't reflect. Then, then, then you just have, if, if the negative was not even there, it just, um, yeah, it just had negative there. Just shift to left and, and shift. And down. That's it. Yep. So if it's like, if it's like negative five, um, yep. would you say reflects about the x-axis by five? No, no. Reflects or about the x-axis is just for the negative part. The five is a separate thing. The five would be a vertical stretch. You have to set, say as a separate thing. We're, we're going to stay up for 31 right now. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I have a question. Are we going to have to graph functions like these? No. Or is so there is there no graphing on the test? Because because next unit is heavy graphing. This is not this is this is more on just algebra. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, that I'm I'm saving that for the next unit. Um. Anyway. Um. Uh, yeah. And if you if you just had like um two left and eleven down, you actually could. So you didn't have. Let's say you didn't have a reflection here. Then you could say 11 down first and two left second. That would have been fine. But again, I prefer that you. Um... Or is your camera's off? Oh, sh I'm sorry. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> All right. Okay, so now next up. Um, it's pretty clear that you have a plus six inside. That shifts six left. And then the two thirds means you're going to vertically. Now, this is kind of tricky. Um, the right way to say it is you vertically shrink. Because it does get smaller, obviously, because you multiply by two thirds. So you have to say it vertically shrinks. So anytime it's below one or zero, or we actually just if it's, one. If, it's, if it's between zero and one, yeah, you have to say it's a shrink. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it shrinks and by a factor. I'm good. Sorry, I was just gonna say, and if it's a negative, then the uh, negative means that it reflects above the x-axis, um, and then it's just a positive. Yeah, and it shrinks by a factor of two thirds because you're getting to two thirds with the original value. So that that that's just more semantics, um, but you do have to say it's shrink because it's not really stretching necessarily. Um, but I'm gonna tell you right now, um, I'm not gonna do that to you guys on the test, I'm gonna give you guys a number that's larger than one, just so you're not confused. Like if I had a four there, 
then clearly it gets amplified, right? Because then everything gets stretched. Like all the Y values get multiplied by four. So yeah, you can even see that for yourself. If I were to, you know, go to Desmos again, um, let me turn these off. Let me go and clear my screen. Yeah, if I like Y equals like square root of X. Oh, come on, man. Here we go. But then if I um, put a four in front, you'd see that, oh yeah, cool. It got stretched, right? Of course you're gonna say stretch. That <laughs> makes sense. Um, but if I put a negative out in front, of course it got reflected, it got flipped over. The black curve is now below the x-axis. If I put one half, it shrunk. It shrunk by half, right? So hopefully that seems like common sense. Like if I had two thirds, it's two thirds of the original value, right? So, hope that seems intuitive. All right. Um, and then lastly, I mean, that's kind of lame. That's just, you're going up five. That's all. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So, hopefully, you guys are cool with that. And there's a question in the chat. So I'll get to that in a second. Okay. Uh, question in the chat. How do you know when it reflects about the Y? Great question. So whenever the negative is out in front, so let's go back to Desmos again. So really bet that your, your best bet to answer those questions, just go to Desmos. And usually squared X is a good parent function because it um, does a lot of different things. Um, you know, points a lot of different directions. So here's root X. Let me turn it on. Here's, uh, let me turn that on. Let's put a negative out in front. That clearly flipped over the X axis. So reflection about the X axis. Plus, you're multiplying the y values by negative one. Oh, excuse me. Multiplying the y values by negative one. So instead of being all the y values being positive, all the y values are negative. That's why I flipped over the x axis. Now, what if I put negative on the inside? Now, I flipped over the y axis. Because in order for this graph to be valid, in order to plug in stuff into it, I need to plug in negative x values, which causes the graph to go over the y axis. So that's how you can tell. Okay, how can you tell if it's horizontally or vertically stretched? Um, again, just what you put on the inside. Um, so let's go back to Desmos again. Again, Desmos is your best friend here. So let's do square root X again. All right, so let's put a two out in front. Clearly, that got stretched vertically, right? It's higher. That's a vertical stretch, right? You're going, you're stretching it up. And of course, if I made it one half, you know, again, that changes vertically. Now, what if I do something to the inside of it? Now, this was a little strange. Um, you could technically say it's vertically stretched. So, Gigi asked a great question. But when I do it on the inside, it's, it's actually better to say it's actually getting vertically compressed. Sorry, horizontally compressed. And the reason why I'm saying that is because if I plug like one in, or let's plug four in, I have four comma two. But then over here, I have two comma two. So what happened was the red curve got horizontally compressed. So the four comma two now became two comma two. So basically the X values got reduced by two. Um, and if I did one half, Um, so you have four comma two in the red curve. And now you're gonna have eight comma two on the blue curve. So in that case, we say it's horizontally stretched because then the uh, X value got doubled to compensate for the one half, to counteract that one half. So um, yeah, so if it's on the inside, it's horizontal, if it's on the outside, it's vertical. Uh, when doing transformations, do absolute uh, yes, the, the absolute brackets do count as parentheses. Absolutely, they do. No pun intended. <laughs> so uh, if you get um, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but if you oh, get God, like y equals root x, what like mm -hmm. would you be asking in that equation, like question, like what's the question that is then um, given? Uh, it, it would be basically just the same thing that we just did right now. Um, mm -hmm. 
So or, you like just the, or, or the packet we did um, in class yesterday where the first question had root x in it. So it'd be like, it'd be like these questions here. Um, I could say, for example, f of x equals uh, 2 root x minus 1 and then plus 2 or plus 4, let's say. Okay. So, so then you, you say we shift 1 right, vertically stretch by 2, and shift 4 up. Okay. Oh, that's how you decompose it, right? Okay. I'm going to be asking something like that on the test. So the say. root, like the square root, doesn't really change much. No, no. So you, I'm going to ask you to compare it to root x. Ooh. How, how does this compare to root x? You shift one right, vertical stretch by two, then shift four up. Oh, okay. That's yeah. just the, that's sorry. it. That's it straight up. And then, Wait, um, can you repeat that one uh, again, sorry? Yeah, sure. Um, so here's root x, and here's uh, the transformed function. Or transform is being changed. And how does it change compared to root x? We want one right because of the minus one. We vertically stretch by two because of two on the outside. And we shift the four up because of the plus four on the outside. So that causes four up. That causes one right. And that causes vertical stretch by two. Got it. Thank you. No problem. You're welcome. Okay. Um, Wait, sorry, quickly. The, so yeah, the two is you're going, what's the two? Two. So if you have two, it's shifting to the right. And then, sorry, what's the two? Um, I don't, I, now I forgot. <laughs> there, just, there it's, 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 it's vertical stretch by two. Vertical stretch. So that right. means and it's, it's only a shrink if it's between zero and one. Right. Because it gets, because the graph gets shrunk. Would you say like, like, for 31, it's two thirds. You say it shrinks by two thirds, you just yep. say it shrinks. Yeah, it's a vertical shrink of, of two thirds, right? Because it's two Mr. thirds e. of the original value. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, if it was negative two thirds, would that be like a reflection? And then, as well as... Yes, yeah, so, so that's a separate step. The reflection okay. is a separate step. And then you say vertical shrink by two thirds. Okay, thank you. All right, let's look at. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not, so 33 to 35, I'm not, I'm not asking on the test. Um, I'm not asking to graph anything because uh, I'm going to save that for the next unit. But what I could say, um, I could kind of do the opposite of like what I did for 33 and 32, where I actually, I tell you, so let me go back, let me go to um, the whiteboard. I could say this, like, um, right, come on. Right transform function of f of x equals root x. if it has the following transformations. And let me go uh, to a text box. So say it um, reflects about the y-axis. Vertical stretch by three and shift five up. So, say I ask that, then to write the equation, you would say y equals because it uh, vertical stretches by three, it'll be three on the outside. Now, if we reflect about the y axis, not the x axis, so the negative goes on the inside. And five up, put plus five right there. So that's something I could ask also. That's just kind of working backwards from the previous problems. If it Wait, was what would you about the y or the x axis, would it be on the outside? Uh, yes, that's correct. Yes. And then there's another question. So I'm sorry, you, someone got cut off. Um, what if it said a horizontal stretch? Okay, great. Great question. If it said, um, yeah, let's say um, horizontal stretch. 
by a factor of three. So then you, get, you actually do the opposite. Instead of saying um, three, you say uh, one third. It actually does the opposite. It's still a negative because we still have the reflection of the y-axis. So that's what you have for that one. Wait, why wouldn't you just do the three on the inside? Why is it now negative one third? Okay, so negative is for this part right here, the reflection. That was just what we had previously. But whenever you do a horizontal stretch, it's always going to be the opposite. Um, so here's the reason why. Let, let's look at um, a table. Let's make a parent function, right? So say I got um, 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, right? And say I got this. So in order to guarantee the same y coordinates as before, uh, x has to be zero still, but now x has to be three, right? Because you got to plug three into here to get one for y. That's why I got that's why I get stretched, and this has to be twelve because what's one third of twelve? Four, right? So that's why it's counterintuitive for the horizontal stretches that when you see one third, it's not a shrink, it's actually a stretch because you're making X bigger, right? To compensate for that. Um, the reason why you don't see that, um, the reason why you don't experience that uh, when it's on the outside, you just say, oh yeah, well, yeah, it's just three. It's, it's, it's a you know, vertical stretch by three. Guess where Y is? On the other side of the equation. It's on the same size as three. So they're directly proportional, right? Think about it, right? They're on the opposite sides of the equation. So yeah, naturally speaking, if you put three on the outside of the radical, so you're multiplying y by three, yeah. They're, they're gonna be, they're, they're be, you know, it, it, it'll be more intuitive, right? But once on the inside, it's next to x. If it's one third, it's actually a horizontal stretch. If you, did, if you put a three here, then guess what? That's a shrink. Because then what has to happen uh, X will still be zero when Y is zero, but now this has to be one third and this has to be four thirds. So now all the X values got reduced, right? To get the same Y values, they all get reduced. So that's what happens there for that one. I'm um, in real quick on number one on the packet you gave us in class, it's four root negative X plus yeah. two mm -hmm. minus seven. So um, shifts down seven because negative seven. Um, I get it shifts, but so it's negative X. Uh, okay, plus well, four. actually, um, hold on to that thought for just one second. There's one quick question. So the value that's causing the shift, whether it's the inside or outside, it's been a will be a stretch. Okay. Um, yeah, so if it's on the inside, um, if it's greater than one, it's actually a shrink. And if it's less than one, it's a stretch. But if it's on the outside, then it's the other way around, just so you know. So that's how you, how you deal with it, Anthony. So um, so again, uh, generally speaking, y equals a times, and I think I use the letter C. So an a bigger than one, vertical stretch. And I'll get to your, uh, that question, JP. And then uh, a is between zero and one, vertical shrink. And, it's actually, and by the way, this isn't the 1.6 notes, just so you know. This is all in the 1.6 notes. Uh, C is bigger than 1. That's a horizontal shrink. Just so you know, it's a horizontal shrink. C is between 0 and 1. That's a horizontal stretch. So just the opposite. So hopefully that clears it up, Anthony. And that's still for the transformation, like describe yep, the transformation. Yep. So now, so, let's, let's do the one you just said. So you said why what we said in the previous packet, and I'm going to do um, yeah. one of the um, domain range type stuff uh, after this, and then we could do another difference quotient. So if you have y equals, say, uh, what was it again? Four root, four root negative, negative, negative x plus seven. seven. Plus two, seven's on the, negative seven's on the outside. Oh, plus two. Hold on. Okay, so what you're going to want to do, so you can see this more properly, is pull out that negative between negative x plus 2. So you pull out like this. 
So that way you can see what's what x sees first. X sees at minus two first. So it's two right. That's two right. Then it's reflected about the y-axis to the negative inside the radical. So it's two right. Reflect about the y-axis. Then vertically stretch by four. And, and why is it the y-axis, not the x-axis? Because you're going to have to make the x values negative so that you can still square root it. So if it's negative x, you distribute the negative? Yep. Um, yep. And then, okay, so it's just the y-axis now. If it there's negative before the x and it's under the radical. You're multiplying the x, you're, you're multiplying the x coordinates by negative one. So now they're on the left side of the y-axis, right? So the right side, they're on the left side. So if there place. wasn't if there wasn't a negative under the radical, but there is a negative by the four, it would uh, reflect above the x-axis, not the y? Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you shift seven down. Okay, thank you. Yep, shift seven down. So you have to distribute the negative to the two, so it's now to the right? Um, but what I did, actually, I factored out the negative. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. So that way I can explicitly see that, oh yeah, I'm causing a shift of two right. And another question in the chat. Um, yes, so uh, someone's asking, uh, so that's why you made it one third when you put it on the, the inside, yeah. When, when one third was inside the radical, that was a vertical, that was a, sorry, a horizontal stretch by three. Exactly. Okay. Um, I think I kind of uh, beat transformations to death now. So we're going to now uh, move on to domain range stuff. Uh, and, you know, again, we still have time if you want to go back and look at transformations again. So let's talk about, um, oh, for number 18 and 19, they're asking to write the piecewise functions. I'm not going to ask that. Uh, I think someone may have asked about that earlier. Um, you know, uh, what do you mean? I think Gigi may have, or Clary may have asked about piecewise. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to ask you guys to do that because we haven't practiced that skill yet. Um, I do like this problem a lot, but we haven't done this yet. So, um, so don't worry about problem I get to your 19 for tomorrow. And again, I'm going to give you guys a graph. So let's, um, Revisit this one, and there's a whole bunch of things where um, you're being asked for number 16, domain, range, increase, decrease, x-intercept, y-intercept, where it's constant. And I'm also going to ask about relative and max, too, in a problem like this. So let me go back to uh, Desmos, because I did type in all, the, all those things here. And I believe there's a hole. Hold on. Yeah, there's a hole at uh, negative 2 and a hole at 3 on the right side. Hey, okay, I'm giving this. I'm giving this to you guys, so don't worry about it. Okay, so there's a hole here. Uh, I can do better than that. So a hole here. Uh, it's filled in here, and there's a hole here. Okay, and there's arrows there and there. Okay, so we're gonna ask about domain. Range, increase, decrease, constant, um, x intercept. Y intercept, relative max, relative min, and then there'll be some other like like find f of two or whatever stuff like that f of one. All right, so let's do this now. Domain. Um, the piecewise function helps too to have it there because you see x is less than negative two, x is bigger than three, and then x is also in between. However, does x ever equal negative 2? Look at the graph and look at the equations. No, right? I don't see an equal sign or equal sign there. And there's two holes there. So negative 2 is never part of the domain. Everything else is covered, though. Even at x equals 3, x equals 3, uh, sorry, there's supposed to be an equal sign there, um, is part of um, 
uh, the second curve or second line or second function. So yeah, so the means we have all real except negative two. The range. Range is the lowest y value, which is pretty clear. It's going to be at um, negative three. And the highest just goes up forever. Sky's the limit. So it goes from negative three, inclusive, by the way, to infinity. Increasing. If it's inclusive, is that um, bracket or bracket? Bracket. Always bracket. OK. Now, increasing is when the graph is going up. When I say that, that's a little confusing. So think of like a roller coaster. You board the roller coaster here. And you move to the right. As I move to the right, nothing happens. I, I kind of just stay flat. And then all of a sudden, there's a jump. And I'm going down for sure. And then when I, I jump down here again, and I'm going up. So it's pretty clear the only place we ever go up is after three. So you're increasing from three to infinity. And you can't include the three because when it starts increasing, three is not, there's a hole at three. Um, another way to think about two is if you drew a line that's tangent to the graph, meaning it touches the graph at one point and has a positive slope, that's also a telltale sign that it's increasing. Uh, decreasing is when you're going down. Clearly going down between um, negative two and three. And three is included because we stop at exactly three. And then constant, um, obviously it's, it's flat from negative infinity to negative two, but negative two is not included. So parentheses. Uh, X-intercepts, where it crosses the X-axis. Uh, looks like it crosses it actually twice. Looks like it happens at four <clears throat> and at three. And I'll also give it as coordinates. So three comma zero and four comma zero. Uh, Weiner says pretty obvious at six. <clears throat> Excuse me. So zero comma six. Uh, relative max. So that's when we see a shift from going um, um, increase, uh, sorry, increasing to decreasing. That never happens here, actually. We never change from increasing to decreasing. Here we're constant. Here we decrease, then we increase. So we never see that transition from increase to decrease here. So that's gonna be none. Now, relative min is when you change from decrease to increase. That clearly happens at x equals three. After x equals three, we start increasing. But you have to give the coordinates where that um, change happens, and it happens at three comma zero. Remember, three is not included in the green curve, but it's included in the blue, blue line. So those are some things I'll, I'll ask for sure on the test. Inverse, okay, someone's asked about inverse. Um, like problems 45 and 46 new problems. So yeah, I'll do inverse next. Um, so uh, we'll do another difference quotient because I know someone asked about that. I think JP asked about that. Um, so we'll do that um, in just a, a tab. But let's talk about inverse functions. And again, relative min, uh, you have to have an increase. Sorry, uh, when the switch, there's a switch from decrease to increase. Relative max, a switch from increase to decrease. So like you're at the top of the roller coaster. We're at the bottom for uh, min, again, top of the uh, other roller coaster for max. Okay. Um, inverse functions. Okay. Um, verify. So, we have talked about this. It was in our notes. Um, it's really simple. You just um, do f of g of x to verify. And that's equal x. So you just got to plug g of x and f of x. So it's root x squared 
plus four minus four. And if you do it, you do get root x squared and you get x. Um, so therefore those will be inverses of each other. So that's what has to happen. Uh, you need um, f of g of x equal x. Or will that, will that always be the case? Yep. Okay. If, well, when that happens, there'll be inverses. Or if I did it the other way around, same thing. So if I plug uh, this into the g of x function, come on. If I plug that into the g of x function, root x minus 4 squared plus 4, x minus 4 plus 4, I get x again. Um, I could ask something like that. So someone's asking would that be a question on test? Yeah. Um, I, what I could do is I could ask you to uh, find the inverse first and then to verify by doing f of g of x. I could totally ask that. And by finding the inverse, you just switch x and y, right? Yeah. So it's actually, let's, let's do it for um, this one here. Um, actually, this one, you can't find the inverse. Uh, let, let, let's come back to, let's go back to this one. Um, so here y equals root x minus four. So x equals root y minus four. Square both sides. Because you want to isolate y and add four and voila, you got you got the answer. X oh come on. X squared plus four equals y. There you go. Um, 46, um, you can't find the inverse. It's actually impossible. Um, I'm not going to ask. That's, that's just too hard. Uh, so I don't want you guys running in circles. Um, I mean, if you switch X, Y, you get this, but it's going to be impossible. Um, actually, it's not technically impossible. Actually, you could do it, uh, because you multiply both sides Y, Y minus two. And then you'd uh, distribute. And then you move, um, I guess, to collect all the y's on one side. Factor out a y. And then divide by x minus 1. So actually, that is possible. I, I lied. That, that, I said it was impossible. It, it is possible. But I'm not going to ask that because we haven't really practiced that enough. Because um, we, because you, you'd have to realize to uh, multiply both sides by y minus two, then to distribute the x, which may not be terribly obvious. But by doing that, um, that enables you to collect all the terms of y on one side, so I can get x, y, y on the ones on one side. So it's x, y minus y. You can factor out y and get y isolated. But I haven't done that with you guys. Uh, it was either practice like that, so I'm not going to do one like that in the test. And if you want to verify it, then yeah, you have to plug this into this for x and that also. So you get 2x plus 3. And again, I'm not going to ask you to verify something like this. That's just too much. And then, of course, you have 2x plus 3. And then you have to find the LCD and work it out. But again, I'm not doing that. It's just too much on you guys. A and 12, okay, from the first packet. Um, okay, equations lines. Okay, I am going to ask that for sure. Um, and you definitely know the forms. Uh, I mean, again, sloping of forms is not, not hard. And by the way, um, uh, I'm only going to either ask you to write the answer like this or point slope form. I'm not going to ask you to write an equation in standard form. It's not hard. Standard form is this, by the way. Um, the reason I'm not going to ask you to do that because no one really uses that form. I mean, from HCs, I guess that's important. Uh, in general form, I, I, I just totally despise. General form is this. But I don't, yeah, I'm not going to ask that. It's, it's a seldom used form. Slope intercept form is one of the more popular forms as well as point slope. So I'll ask you the one of those. And slope intercept form is this. You got to know that. I can't give that to you. That's just the 
again, we're in pre-calculus, you're a few months away from taking calculus, and you'd be using these forms a lot. But if we work it out, you want to be parallel to that line. So you, you have to have the same slope. So guess what? I'm going to isolate y here and extract the slope. Divide by negative 5, you get 2 fifths x plus 7 fifths. So my slope here is 2 fifths. So now my equation would be y equals 2 fifths x plus b. Now, I have to have a point that I can plug in. The point you're going to plug in is the x-intercept of this line. Well, what's that x-intercept? That's when y is 0, right? Right? You're, you're on the x-axis, so y is 0. But guess what? Plug in 0 for y and solve for x. 3x equals 12, x is 4. Boom. Uh, so you got to plug in 4 for x and 0 for y and solve for b. b would be negative 8 fifths. There you go. So your equation is y equals 2 fifths x minus 8 fifths. Done and done. Um, so yeah, I cast something like that on the test. Uh, so I'm going to ask about 12. Uh, I'm not asking this on a test um, to graph, so don't worry about that. Uh, but you do need to know what the transformations do. Like that's obviously a horizontal shrink. Um, and you do have to say by a factor. You have to say the opposite because it's all opposites of x's of one fifth because it does reduce the one fifth of its value horizontally. And here you're going to say a vertical stretch. By a factor of five. So anytime there's a large number under the radical, <clears throat> like it's the outside, like okay, total opposite, hundred percent horizontal strand. And then if it's oh yeah okay because it's if it's under the radical it's a horizontal shrink and if it's outside it's on the vertical okay right. Yeah. Um. I just had a question based on like um for like defining the inverse and stuff. Well we have to like um evaluate like each like piecewise function at the given values of like the independent variable. Um what do you, wait, what do you mean by piecewise? Like basically like where it's f of x equals like three x plus five and four x plus seven or something, and then you'd have to like oh, sure. well, but I'm gonna give you a graph anyway. So you can look at the graph. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, but I mean, it's not hard. I mean, like, obviously, if you want f of one, which we're going to okay. go with, you're going to go with the third equation because one satisfies that inequality. Plug one in, you get three. Okay. So, like, okay. Yeah. And then finding the inverse of the functions, are those only the ones we just Yeah, we over? switch x to y and isolate y. Okay. Yeah. Um, question in the chat again. So we wouldn't do like number nine the first step is class right. Yes. Um, well, I mean, I'm not going to ask you to graph the piecewise function, but when I give you the graph, I'm going to ask you to go through all these questions. Absolutely, I'm going to do that, which we just did, and the and the new set. Um, I mean, we've covered a lot of ground here. Uh, we haven't talked about composites. We probably should do that. I'm guessing. Um, yeah, let's do composites because I, I, I feel like we'll have a little more sense of completion. Uh, let's just quickly talk about average rate change. And actually, who's still with me here? Um, wow. Good. A lot of you guys are in for a long haul. Good. Good. Um, all right. So, yeah, I think we'll go close to 10 o'clock then. But definitely at 10 o'clock, we should stop because you guys should sleep. And that's usually when I watch a little TV before I go to bed. So, um, Right here. Let's go. What back. do you watch? Um, I watched Ted Lasso actually. Oh, okay. The new yeah. seasons came out. Yeah, I watched the first one. Um, 
Yeah. Um, I, I started to get into the Formula F1 thing on Netflix. Um, <laughs> I watched Formula One. I just, I'm starting um, Full Spring. It's like the golf Formula Full One. really good. You'll like that one really a lot. Good. It's really good. Yeah. Um, actually, Tony Finau has become my favorite golfer. I, I really, I yeah. Think. He's awesome. Whole Max family Tom. guy, but kind of conflicted. Yeah. Um, the tennis one's a good one, too. Um, Justin Thomas is from my parents' hometown. So, like, they know his parents. So, I'm a big Justin Yeah, Thomas he's fan. a nice guy. Which is yeah. easy to say because, like, that's like saying you're like a Chiefs fan. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, seven's easy. It's plugging into a function. We did odd even stuff. I'm not going to ask whether it's some of the function or not, so don't worry about that. So don't worry about one, two, three. Again, more writing of lines. You guys are fine. I don't have an answer for this one, but um, you could ask. You can work on it now and ask if you got the right answer or not, or um, or something on class. Um, let's see here. Um, we could probably do something like 14 a little bit. That's a good one to do. We can come back. See, so that's why I'm, I'm going to give you guys some like 14, just so you know. Like, I'm going to give you a graph and then ask the stuff. Like, that's what I'll do. Mr. E, what can you describe or explain like closed circles and open circles and parentheses, all that stuff? So, uh, open circles not included, closed circle included. And then, um, if it's included, put a bracket, not included, put a parentheses. Okay. That's Thank it. You. Yep. Uh, Wait, okay. Mr. E. Oh. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Could you go back to 14 for a second? Sure, go ahead. Fire away. Um, I'm just confused on what you would say the domain is for this. Um, so actually, let's, let's do it now. I, I was going to do a difference quotient problem, but let's just do this now, and then I'll do a difference quotient problem after this one. Um, well, there are going to be arrows here, first of all. So it's definitely starting at negative infinity. Um, and all x values are covered, even though there's a hole here. There's a dot filled in circle right above it. So x equals, I, I believe, three is covered. Um, and infinity, right? So you have that. Then range, um, there's a gap here. So obviously, some y values are not covered. So negative infinity, and then um, it goes up to eight parentheses, and then it skips up to nine. Infinity. X intercepts pretty obvious at one and two. And we'll say it label as coordinates. Y intercepts pretty easy. It's at zero, comma two. Mr. Zero. E, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Um, for the range, wouldn't it stop at nine because it doesn't go above nine? Oh, it's you're right. Yikes. I always space out on that. So when that happens, then you just do you just do that. Thank you. It's getting late. Yes, you're 100% correct. F0 is 2, right? Just y by at x equals 0. F of 3 is, I'll make it very clear on the test, but I, I believe, oh, wait, F3, duh, it's obviously 9. It will be labeled. Oh, wait, shit, my bad. No, it's 9. You go to the filled in one. Yep. Oh my. Uh, it's never. Uh, it's constant from nine to infinity. Sorry, from three to infinity. Okay, okay I'm tired. Um, it's increasing until you get to. Uh, this this graph is off a little bit, but I'll make it clear on the test. Don't worry about it. But it, it's increasing from negative infinity to zero and it starts increasing again that's really crappy again i'll make it very clear on the test 1.5 to um three but three is not included and it's decreasing from zero to 1.5 F and negative three, of course, is negative, right? Because negative three is like way down here somewhere. So, yep. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Uh, another question in the chat. Uh, still super fuzzy about close and open brackets. Um, okay. Um, 
Yeah, I could do eight and nine, uh, but let me uh, answer Walton's question. So why is there anything between the eights? Okay. So eight's not part of um, why it never equals eight in this graph, right? Here's y equals eight. There's nowhere on the graph that has a y coordinate of eight. Nowhere. Because then there's a gap right here. That's why um, it gets close to eight, but not exactly eight. That's why it's a, it's a parentheses. And then nine is included, so you got to put a bracket. So brackets are included, parentheses are not included. So it means it gets like it gets up to seven point nine 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 nine, but not eight exactly. Uh, let's do. Difference question again. Okay. Will you post this tonight or tomorrow? The video, um, actually, as soon as I get off, I'll, I'll download it. It usually takes about five to 10 minutes to download. This is actually going to turn out to be a pretty long video, so it might be a little longer. Then what I'll do is I'll um, uh, upload YouTube, and usually the, the link gets created right away. So I'll show you guys the link, but then probably won't be live for another 10, 15 minutes because it has to process. So my guess is uh, the video probably won't be quite be ready until close to 1030. Uh, mm -hmm. But I hope you go to sleep. <laughs> um, because it would probably would make worse. I, I, it would probably be good to watch again in the morning. If you get up, at, I usually get up at six six thirty. So if you get up around the same time, it might be good to kind of. And you could just sort of like, you know, fast forward, you know, to whatever part you want to get to. Um, I know we didn't do quite this in a linear fashion, so you'd have to kind of get lucky with how you um, fast forward or rewind. But um, yeah, you totally could watch it. Um, and 14 infinity is not included. Yeah, the infinities are never included. I don't know, we don't know what infinity is, right? It's this abstract idea. Infinities are never included in interval notation. All right, so different question. Let's do this one more time. Okay. So you're going to replace x with x plus h. So set negative x squared is negative x plus h squared. So that 5x is 5 times x plus h minus 7. So that right there, all that, I'm going to put a, um, a minus sign here. All that is f of x plus h. Then minus f of x, which I'll do, and I have to put this in parentheses because I have to distribute the negative afterwards. So the first part, x plus h, is always just going to be uh, what the original equation is and plug in x for x plus h. Yep, 100%. <laughs> and then and all then over h. The f but... of x is, sorry, the f of x is just yep. the regular equation. That's what it is, yep. Perfect. And, oh boy, I didn't leave myself enough space here. So you have negative x, uh, I'll have to put parentheses, x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 5x plus 5. I know you guys can distribute. It's just very tedious. Minus 7 plus x squared, minus 5x, plus 7, the whole shebang of rage. And then I'm going to shoot the negative right now, so I don't have much space, so it'll be, uh, all those become negative. Negative x squared and x squared is cancel, 5x, negative 5x cancels, negative 7, 7 cancel. So what do you got now? Do some green up top. You got negative 2xh minus h squared plus 5h all over h. And then you can factor out h from the top. Negative 2x minus h plus 5 all over h. h is cancel. And there you go. That's a difference question. And then what was the thing where it was like you said you'd give us like x squared times or plus x or something? Yeah, like, like this, this one. Yeah. Okay. So something that's that's uh, the, the one of the fractions was a little too uh, too involved, I felt. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Can we maybe try one of those real quick? Like a sure. Why don't you guys try it right now? Um, find the difference quotient for x squared plus x. See what you guys get.
question in the chat. Two questions. Oh, sure, no problem, uh, Liliami, the, the chat. Uh, I haven't got your email, so I apologize. Um, I haven't got to it yet. Uh, 2x plus h plus 1. Um, yep, you got you got one. Good work. Yep. You guys should get 2x plus h plus 1. You do it correctly. Thank you, Mr. E. I'll see you tomorrow. Great. You're welcome. See you tomorrow. And then there's one on the pack you gave us where it says number four, use interval notation to state the domain and range of mm -hmm. f of x uh, negative and then parentheses x plus three squared and then minus five. Um, like how how would I approach that? Wait, 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 what are you talking about? I'm sorry. Uh, it's on the review packet that you gave us from school number four. Oh, hold on, let me pull it up. Give okay, me a sec. Uh... Sorry, if no one else wants to go over this, but I just saw it. Oh, um, I'm not, I'm not asking that. Don't worry about okay. it. I mean, the, the intervals, I mean, the domain's all real because there's no restrictions. Uh, the range, I mean, you have to have a graph. Um, you'd see that, you know, it's at the vertex is the high point because it's opening down. And the white corner of the vertex is negative five. So the range would be negative three and negative five, but I'm not, I'm not asking okay. that. So don't worry okay. about it. Sweet. Um, yeah, I think we kind of, uh, and there's no graph. I exhausted we... everything. Yeah, no. Sweet. Oh. Um, wait, Mr. Omoshni, could yes, you, go ahead. No really, right, sorry, could you go over number eight and like, uh, writing the equation slope intercept? Sure. On this one here. On this packet. Um, great. Have a good night. On the first one. Yeah, sure. Sure. Oh, the first one. Okay. Um, you're welcome, Thank you, Dana. Mr. E. Welcome. See you guys. See you guys tomorrow. Uh, oh, this one here. Um, yeah. So, um, so really quick, we have to get the slope because it have to be parallel to this line, right? So negative five y equals negative two x minus seven. Divide by negative five, you get two fifths x plus seven fifths. So slope is two fifths, right? And then you have to have the same x-intercept as this. So it means, means you have to plug in zero for y. Right? Because when you have an x-intercept, y is zero. 3x equals 12, x is 4. Uh, so 4 comes zero as a point on the line. So you could start with point slope form. And then just get it into um, slope intercept form, 3 fifths x. Minus 12 fits. And there you go. That's your answer. That's all. Does that does that make sense, Iris? Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, Mr. E. Yeah, I think we, I don't know. Uh, for I number think. three, okay. does it, I ended up getting, um, x to the ninth power plus 2x to the or equal mi minus 4 mm -hmm. would that mean that it's odd because no, neither neither everything has to change sign only the two things change sign not all three not okay. all three terms that's neither okay. yeah if you have a constant and well first of all if you have a constant it's never going to be odd because constant is never going to change sign that's why it's called a constant in the first place right um And then, um, you know, uh, it could be even if there's a bunch of uh, terms with even exponents next to it. Um, no, no, I think uh, it's almost 10 o'clock. Um, it's time to wind down. Uh, yeah, we did a pretty thorough review, so I'm going to stop the recording just so. Um, Thank you, Mr. E. Stopped. Um,